Today I'm going to talk about properties of estimators. So say I have a model with an unknown parameter. I have to estimate this thing using methods may have seen, like ma maximum likelihood, least squares, method moments, and so on. The thing is like, all these methods may give us different estimators, so how do I know which is the best? In other words, how can I compare the performance of these estimators? If we go by something a popular criteria such as the mean square error MSE, the problem with this criteria is that it doesn't give one best estimate or one best estimator. Sorry, the class of estimators is too large. So then the statisticians are thinking, okay, we have to shrink these class of estimators. So let's just consider the class of unbiased estimates. So taking the class of unbiased estimates which is the one that's best out of those and to say best is like which is the one with the smallest variance and so this leads us to this thing called efficiency let's look at this question we've got a sequence of random variables Poisson okay show that lambda hat which here you can see it's the sample mean of x is efficient estimator for lambda now jargon what do we mean by efficient well this lambda hat is efficient if two things are satisfied it's unbiased and that also it achieves this thing called the Cray-Morale lower bound. We're going to assume that we can show that it's unbiased so we're going to just focus today just on looking at this amazing result. Statisticians will tell you the Cray-Morale lower bound. Now uh, it's a bit of a technical um, result here you need to look in textbooks for conditions and uh, assumptions, regularity conditions so that you can use it, but we're going to just brush those on the carpet. This Cramer lower bounds says that suppose you have a model with a parameter theta, then the Cramer lower bound is given by this expression, which is the one over the minus the expectation of the second derivative of the log likelihood. Now where the xi's are iid, then we can rewrite this in terms of just one observation n times and then this expression which is expectation of the log likelihood for a single observation so I've just here subscript i i for the ith observation the equivalent the thing is if you work with this second one then you don't have all these summation signs uh, coming in So in our question, does the lambda hat attain the Krimerau lower bound? Is what we want to answer today. One method is to compute the variance of lambda hat and also compute Krimerau lower bound and then compare them. If they're equal, then we can say that uh, lambda hat does attain the Krimerau lower bound. Okay, so let's do that. Well, step one, let's find the variance first because that's something that we don't really need to discuss. So the variance of lambda hat is and then lambda hat is given by x bar and we know that the variance of each xi is lambda so there's n of them and there you go lambda over n now let's compute the Cremorau lower bound let's break that into stages so let's take the log likelihood for just the ith observation that's this, it's one of this xi is Poisson in this question. Now take the first derivative and take the second derivative. Finally I'm going to take the expectation of this thing. Notes from this, these three steps to this step I have now replaced the little x by big x because I'm interested in taking the expectation of the random variable x, not the actual realization x, which should be a constant. All right. So again, using the property that the mean of a Poisson with a rate with a parameter lambda is lambda, we get this. Cremorau lower bound then is, and then just stick it into the definition. We get lambda over n, which is the same as the variance of lambda hat in step one. So we conclude that x bar is efficient. 
In other words, out of the class of all unbiased estimators, I could drop the word class, out of all unbiased estimators that you can come up with, this x bar has the smallest variance, i.e. has the most precision. We can also say it follows, therefore, that x bar is the minimum variance unbiased estimator. Now this is another bit of jargon. So the minimum variance unbiased estimator is like out of all unbiased estimators that estimator has the smallest variance. That might sound like a bit like the criminal lower bound but it isn't because, now let's make comments, if, let's go back to general case, let's call it theta hat, if you have an estimator theta hat it's efficient that implies it's minimum variance unbiased estimator but the converse does not hold so if it's minimum variance unbiased estimator it does not imply that it is efficient and this will be the case where a criminal lower bound estimator does not exist. Now we'll come up to another property about the MLE that makes it so useful the finite sample result of MLE maximum likelihood estimator. If the Kramer L lower bound estimator exists it turns out it's given by the MLE in general. Alright so that, that's the theorem. Another remark is that the criminal lower bound extends the multi-parameter model. So here we've just given an example or definition for one parameter, model of one parameter, but extends to multi-parameter models. Okay, finally, I've made some remarks, so let's go back to the top, what I've written here. So we just notice in passing that criminal lower bound in, it's a, involves a computing a likelihood function. This expression, criminal lower bound expected value, minus the expected value of the second derivative of the likelihood of the IFA observation is called the informa Fisher information which you after reading around some people call the Fisher information for the whole of the likelihood not just the IFA observation all right but here I'm calling it we'll call it the Fisher information just as when you're reading around just see what which what they're defining for is it defining for that just one single observation for all, for all observations over here where we're looking to see whether our estimator achieves the Kramer lower bound this is just one way most direct without using any fancy results if you want to use a fancy result there's another method that is based on a certain factorization of the first derivative of the like log likelihood function a reference to this other method is uh, I've got the book right here Casella Berger second edition page 341 and the title is Statistical Inference. Okay, another bit of jargon. You see why I kind of try to do this question without avoiding all the jargon as possible. Uh, this first derivative of the log likelihood of a single observation is called the score, and again, of the IF observation, because some people might call the score as a score for the whole, for all observations. I've already noted about the small x and the big x here and we note also that once we take the expectation of the second derivative it's only a function of the parameter not of the random variable so if you've got like x's in here then you've obviously done something wrong it's kind of because of this fact that when you take the expectation of the second derivative it does not involve the x's, the random variables is why we can just consider one of them and then do n times the thing which is what we've done here. Okay so if you're not convinced you can repeat the whole process starting from here but on the entire likelihood not just for the i observation so here you're gonna have sum of xi, sum of xi, repeat the whole thing you find you're still gonna get this result.